I'm going to spend a couple of minutes to tell you a few things about myself. It might sound boring or irrelevant, but bear with me. I'm getting somewhere. So there's a few facts about me. I was uh, born and raised in central Greece, uh, and I come from a poor family. And that is relevant, though, because there's worse. Uh, I'm mainly self-taught. I wasn't originally a developer. I wasn't. Uh, I was taught the basics of programming, but I never got into developing. Uh, I started my own IT business in Greece um, soon after I became like 20 after the army service that I had to uh, do, which is a thing in Greece. And my business was a small local business. Uh, I basically had no budget for it. Uh, and but I still wanted to build a website for my business. And um, I was introduced to the world of uh, CMS or someone brought it up with me. And I did some resets and I came, um, like the, the, the first results that came up were uh, Drupal, WordPress and Joomla. Did some resets, people were saying the Drupal was really difficult and I shouldn't touch it, but I liked the challenge. So um, yeah, I built my website with Drupal and then uh, I started, getting involved with the community. So um, the motto says, come for the software, stay for the community. That's what happened with me as well. Um, then come 2009, the economic crisis starts in the EU. Um, I struggled with my business as so many others in the Southern parts of Europe, especially. Uh, and I, uh, finally in 2013, I had to shut down my business. Uh, in 2014, I moved to Australia. I left behind my wife and my two year older uh, daughter at the time. I started working as a cleaner when I came to Australia. And at the same time, I was building my IT business slowly again, uh, finding new customers and yep, starting from scratch. Um, in 2016, I was invited to present on Backdrop CMS in Drupal South, Gold Coast, which was my first Drupal event ever. Uh, and that's where, that's where I met Con from Salsa Digital. Uh, I was invited at the beginning of 2017 to start working as a contractor for Salsa Digital and became permanent around like maybe five, five to six months later. Uh, since 2018, I've been working as a level two, level three application support engineer for GovCMS. CMS. And in 2020, I became permanent resident in Australia. But I left to come to Greece because of COVID, uh, because my mom's really old, my wife's mom's really old, and they needed support. Uh, so I've been stuck here since. Uh, but looking forward to come to uh, Melbourne again uh, in a month or so, like maybe three and a half weeks now. And you might be wondering, why are you telling us all that, Greg? Um, I, I am an economic migrant. I have lost the best years of my daughter because of an economic crisis happening in one part of the world. Um, I'm very sensitive when it comes to socioeconomic differences. Uh, and uh, it's my understanding by moving from a less fortunate country, which was Greece, to a more fortunate country, uh, that people tend to uh, live in their own bubbles. And we, we make many assumptions with regards to multiple things when it comes to IT. Um, uh, access to, to education, uh, when someone has to start work, for example, or uh, what that what, what being from a, social, a different economic background means for them. So yeah, different things. Uh, when it comes to programming and open source and Drupal, I'm very passionate about UX. I became insomniac when I was 17 years old, uh, so I don't sleep much. Uh, uh, when I don't sleep, I contribute to open source. And I honestly believe that open source is a noble cause and it's one of the things that will save the world. And with that, uh, we'll start the, the session, which is the main part of the session, which is the introduction to Backdrop CMS. Uh, and uh, towards the end of this presentation, uh, we'll have a Q&A session, which I'll, I'll uh, I'll stop recording then so that we can speak more freely so that it's not a record. It's my experience from other events that uh, uh, that that people speak up more freely when, when not on record. Uh, so I'll allow for that to happen. Um, 
So what is Backdrop? Back Backdrop is basically a free and open source content management system that helps people build modern, uh, extensible, comprehensive websites affordably. And the target audience mainly is uh, small to medium-sized businesses, nonprofits, and education. Right. Um, you can find more information at backdropcms.org. Uh, Backdrop CMS is a fork of Drupal. Uh, the fork was uh, announced uh, back in 2013. There's uh, a, an article uh, which is called Don't Panic, and it was written, it, it was basically the announcement uh, by the person that forked, by, by, by one of the people that founded the project, basically. Um, and I'll provide the link so that you can view it and read it uh, at your own pace. Uh, uh, but the main fact is that we need to keep these numbers in mind. 20, 2013, end of 2013 is, is when Backdrop CMS is like the fork is being announced. And then uh, the first release of Backdrop is in January 2015, which is about the first year I was in Australia. Um, there's one graph in that article, which I've put here, uh, which, which I would like to discuss. And, and that sort of like, that was created back in 2013. And it was sort of like predicting what will happen with the introduction of the, uh, symphony and composite dependencies in the, in the Drupal space. Uh, basically Nate said that, um, as most felt, there were two portions of the Drupal community when it comes to this context, to this aspect. There would be the highly skilled, uh, very experienced developers, uh, professionals working with enterprise, with businesses, with big budgets, etc. And then there would be small uh, tinkerers, weekend or what you call it, weekend warriors, or self learners, or like in my situation, a uh, a site owner which was tech savvy enough to set up their own site and, and you know, play with it. Um, and the prediction there was that introducing more dependencies and uh, barriers when it comes to, like, to uh, tools that you need to learn would actually decrease the adoption rate. And the, the hope was that with the, the introduction of Backdrop, uh, we would be able to preserve a big amount of this uh, uh, audience that would otherwise flee to other solutions. Right, so uh, the, the the plea there at that point, or the idea was that both products would continue, and then uh, Drupal would focus on the enterprise as it was intended, or for ambitious uh, experiences, and then Backdrop would would cater for uh, I don't know, let's call it the less ambitious people. Again, ambition is something relative. Um, so these are actual actual graphs from Drupal.org, from the, the Drupal project usage spaces. Uh, uh, one is the one that, that I grabbed as it was from the web archive back in 2013 when the fork was announced. Uh, and you will see around here, around 2021 is where uh, Drupal 7 enters the space and it's like, it goes upwards from there on. And then the second graph is as it is now, like I think I grabbed the screenshot yesterday or the day before, and it shows a, a decline as it was predicting. So you will see that this thing that was predicted in 2013 is actually becoming a reality. Um, one fact is that Drupal 7 has been the most successful version of Drupal so far. It brought the community from 30, 30, uh, sorry, 300,000 sites to over a million. I think it was close to 1.1 on 1.2 at some point. Even until a couple of weeks ago, if you combined Drupal 8, Drupal 9, and Drupal 10 installations, still Drupal 7 installations were more. We were kind of counting more installations there. Um, yet all these years, we have Drupal cons, and you hardly ever see any chance be given to uh, D7-related sessions. So it means that the D7 site owners, for whatever reason, they chose to stick with D7. I'm not examining that right now. They were being basically neglected or you know treated as second category uh, citizens, but by, by, by the community. Um, in fact, if there was any D7 uh, session, it would be to actually push people to upgrade or migrate to D8, D9. So here comes Backdrop CMS now, which is yet another tool, and um, 
we don't see ourselves as a uh, competitor to Drupal. Uh, you have the low sort of like uh, portion of the of the market that would would go to solutions like Wix and Squarespace, and then you have the most popular CMS in the market, which is WordPress. And then the the more uh, uh, complex projects and websites would choose to go, and the enterprise sites, I should say, would go with Drupal. Um, backdrop positions ourselves somewhere in between as a solution in between those two, the main players, WordPress and Drupal. So the Backdrop CMS project was founded initially by uh, Jen Lampton and, and Nate Lampton. Um, um, some of you that have been in the Drupal community for a long time will already know the names. Um, I will provide again the links uh, to their user profiles in Ditto.org to, to sort of like get an idea of the contributions that these people have provided over the years. Um, but it is a fact that both of these developers, um, both of these people are Drupal developers. Uh, they've been doing training for years. Uh, actually, Nate was, I started learning from the Lullabot videos. That's how I learned Drupal basically. And so his face and his voice was familiar. Uh, they are core contributors to Drupal. Uh, Nate is responsible for the uh, CK editor implementation in D8 before um, Symphony was introduced. Uh, Jen, just as an example, was uh, at some point leading, I think, uh, the Twig initiative in D8. Uh, and both of them have been advocating for Drupal. The, the point that I want to make is that Backdrop CMS was founded and is being, being maintained by people who love Drupal. Uh, one of them is myself. As I mentioned earlier, I work mainly, my day job is with Drupal 7 and now moving to Drupal 8 and 9. Uh, my day job or what puts money, uh, sorry, food on the table is not Backdrop, it's Drupal. Uh, yet my contributions are with Backdrop and I'll explain that. I'm happy to explain that. So um, when the project started, we decided to form a, a committee um, th that would steer the, the project. And we took as a model the Apache Project Management Committee. Uh, currently, uh, th these are the, the members, yours truly as well here, uh, of the Project Management Committee. We are seeking to grow this committee. And over time, there have been people that um, ca uh, came and left. The initial idea was that each member would serve for two years, but there's some of us that have been uh, in the committee for multiple years now. Um, and the general idea, again, is that each person would be a constituent for a portion of the community. And we're trying to sort of like uh, reach wide by uh, having representatives of ideas or uh, values of different uh, takes of life, genders, ethnicities, level of education, uh, ages, what have you. So we are trying to get a, a wide spe spectrum of re re representatives from the community so that their voice is being heard in the committee that, that steers the project. Uh, so to make sure that there's no big surprises for any specific group uh, during the lifetime of the project. The responsibilities of the project management committee are to, to handle conflict resolution, to oversee the direction of the project, to ensure that we follow the, the project philosophy. And if ever it is necessary to change the, to come into agreement and change the project philosophy accordingly. But in order to do that, we had to define the, the project uh, philosophy. And we early on sort of formulated this set of principles that backdrop should be easy to upgrade and keep uh, backwards compatibility as much as possible. Uh, write code that the majority can understand and work with, uh, include features that benefit the majority, make sure that backdrop can be customized and extended by developers, uh, make sure that we keep sites, people, and the software secure, uh, be performant, and make sure that, that the software runs on very low system requirements, even on shared hosting, always release on time, on a schedule, and of course that the software remains free and open source forever. This is the Backdrop mission. It says Backdrop CMS enables people to build highly customized websites affordably through collaboration and open source, with the keywords here being websites, 
uh, as in plain websites. Not that you cannot do headless with backdrop, you can do that, but our target audience or uh, our preference is that people build simple sites with that. And another keyword is affordably, so with as less cost as possible. And how do you make uh, a, a web development or the ownership of a site more affordable is that you uh, make sure that you increase the out of the box functionality, you improve the user experience and the developer experience, uh, you decrease server requirements, make uh, updates uh, less, uh, more effortlessly, automatic if possible, uh, and upgrades uh, should be faster and easier, and more things, of course. When it comes to release schedule, we um, have we released three times a year. The, that's for the minor releases that get new features uh, every January, May, and September 15. And we have always been uh, sticking with this on, on schedule for the past years. Since its initial release, Backdrop has seen 22 on-time releases according to that schedule. The most recent release has been in January 15th uh, this year and the upcoming releases uh, this May on the 15th. And I will provide the links to these, uh, the roadmap, as you can see in the milestones so that you can check them out. One, one of the most frequent questions that we get asked is, what about security? Uh, well, we work closely with the Drupal security team. Actually, two, two of our members, of the members of our security team are members of the uh, Drupal security team as well and we coordinate the releases. So if there is a change, a security change that needs to happen in Drupal that affects Backdrop as well, we make sure that the releases come out at the same time, same day. But we also have our own security team uh, independently. We have our own uh, uh, workflows of reporting security issues and you know we, we make releases, uh, security releases of our own that most likely don't apply to, to Drupal for both core and country. When it comes to contributed security, the, uh, there is a process for people to be accepted to get into to, to the contribution space. Uh, and one of the terms in the agreement that in the in the uh, agreement that they have to state that they state that they agree uh, says that the security team is authorized to fix any contrib problems and create security releases without consent from the maintainers of the module. This is a difference in the model that is being used between contrib and Drupal and backdrop. Um, we also try to make it easier to maintain um, contrib projects. We have formulated a, um, a team called the Bug Squad, which is a group of trusted members of the contributed group. Uh, and we help other maintainers stay, stay on top of minor bug fixes and usability improvements. So if there's any uh, issue that has a pull request and that has been a TBC for like three, four weeks or more, People can report that to the bug squad. The bug squad will review the code, um, unless it is a it is a major change in code. Uh, the bug squad is free to to merge that core uh, that code if they agree, and then create a new release. This takes the burden off of specific people. Uh, from you know, life happens. Maintainers might have life of their own, and they might not be able to uh, solve a security issue or get to their issue queue. And we have seen that happen a lot of times in the Drupal space. Uh, or some maintainers hold their modules as you know their babies. That is the the thing that people used to describe it. They are not uh, letting go, and at the same time, they're not doing a good, a very good job at maintaining it. Uh, so we, this is our solution, our idea. Um, currently, the bug squad is uh, comprised of three people, but as the community grows, we are seeking to to add more people uh, to help out with with uh, you know crowdsourcing, sort of like making a shared responsibility the maintenance of the entire contrib space. Um, Backdrop, of course, same as Drupal has modules, themes, but we also have a, a, another, a third um, top layer, uh, top level uh, notion of uh, an add-on, which is layout templates or layouts for short. Um, this is a little bit of a statistic. I, I didn't have the time and it's a very complex um, matrix to update very often. So this is not the most up-to-date, but this is the top 100 um, Drupal 7 modules. 
and it's a status to give you an idea of how many of them have been ported already, how many are underway, how many have been included in core or not required in Drupal core. Um, and why I'm showing this is that um, this goes back to the out of the box experience, less things to install, less things to, to configure. Uh, again, this is a, just a rough idea of you know a list of modules uh, uh, that have been included in Backdrop Core. And when I say that, I don't mean that we just copied the core the, the code of the modules in Core. We have um, integrated the, the features of these modules in the system in the subsystems of Core. Um, so there's very tight integration and, and uh, streamlined as well. Some statistics: um, there's over 900 projects. Um, in GitHub, and out of these, uh, over 700 have official releases. The rest of them are either beta or uh, in progress to be ported. Uh, some statistics about the community. Uh, these are the official download count and how many sites uh, the, uh, have been built in, in, uh, with Backdrop. The amount compared to Drupal space is very small, of course, we, because we are very terrible at, at doing marketing. Um, we need help with that. Uh, one thing to note, and this is the statistics page, is that we have been steadily over 2,000 installations after January this year. But if we go back to about a year, you will see that out of the 2,000 some uh, installations, five to 600 um, sites have been built in the last year over the, the course of nine years. So we see a big increase in people moving uh, sites or building new sites with Patrick uh, over the last year. Um, there's close to 5,000 members on, uh, registered in backdropcms.org, uh, over 150 uh, contributors, and the contrib group has over 100 members. Now, if you tie that to these statistics, it's close to 1,000 projects, which means that there's a handful, like every, every uh, uh, on average, every contrib developer has ported at least or developed at least 10 modules over the past few years. Uh, and that's because of the similarities between the code base from Drupal 7 and between Drupal 7 and Backdrop. And these are some statistics about supporting organizations, service providers, and contractors available who are higher. Um, this is where the community meets. We have a um, chat on Zulip. Every week we hold two meetings. Um, these, these are UDC times, I should have converted them to, to Aussie times. Uh, so every week we alternate uh, between a design and UX meeting and a, an outreach meeting. And then the second meeting is a core development meet, meeting. And then every Wednesday, there's a, a two hour slot of office hours, which means that anyone can come with their questions, anything they wanna ask, anything like if they, even if they have a, a problem with their sites, they can screen share with us and we can help them uh, or brainstorm. And we also have uh, backdrop live events, which are sort of like these, as I said, unconference events where the presentations are not being recorded. It's just uh, discussions around topics. And we had a recent one uh, just this past weekend. You can find more information at events, backdrop CMS at all. And here's, here's a few links of where you can find us, the site, the forum, uh, the GitHub repo, uh, the documentation and API site and some social links as well. 